If you were to stroll through the Ashdown Forest in Sussex, England in 1925, it's quite possible you'd meet a five-year-old boy named Christopher Robin with his beloved toy bear, Edward. Edward Bear came to live with Christopher Robin as a first birthday present from his mother and father. Gradually, new friends would join Edward in Christopher Robin's nursery. First Eeyore, then Piglet, followed by Tigger, and finally, Kanga and Baby Roo. It's true, there was a real boy named Christopher Robin, and this is the story of how he and his toy bear inspired a literary treasure. It's August 1914, when Canadian Army officer Lieutenant Harry Colburn pays $20 for an American black bear cub while at a train stop in White River, Ontario. He names her Winnie, after his hometown of Winnipeg, and she accompanies him to Quebec, where she's appointed the regimental mascot of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Brigade. In December, he is shipped out to France to fight in the First World War, and Colburn leaves Winnie in the temporary care of the London Zoo. By the early 1920s, Christopher Robin Milne's father, Alan Alexander Milne, is already a famous dramatist and the youngest writer ever to join London's prestigious satirical magazine, Punch. One blustery holiday in 1923, Milne sits down in a friend's summer house in Wales, opens his exercise book and starts to write a number of children's poems, among them The Dormouse and The Doctor. There once was a dormouse who lived in a bed of delphinium's blue and geranium's red. And all the day long he'd a wonderful view of geranium's red and delphinium's blue. Milne's publishers are enchanted and suggest he team with artist Ernest Shepherd to compile a book of poems. Shepherd's early sketches are modelled after his own son's bear, which looks just like Christopher's bear. Milne is charmed with the illustrations. The result is his first book of verses, When We Were Very Young, published in 1924. His style touches the child in all of us and is an instant success. However, the bear featured in these verses is Mr. Edward Bear. Winnie the Pooh has not been born yet. In the spring of 1925, Christopher Robin joins a neighbour and his daughter on a visit to London Zoo. There, he has a momentous meeting with none other than Lieutenant Colburn's black bear, Winnie. Here's Christopher, actually inside the cage at the zoo, feeding the friendly bear a spoonful of condensed milk. She doesn't like honey. Christopher renames his toy bear Winnie the Pooh. Winnie, after his new friend at the zoo, and Pooh after a swan who lived on a lake in Sussex. But where the the comes from, nobody knows. His son's visit to the zoo inspires Milne to write a story about a special bear. The first Pooh adventure, in which we are introduced to Winnie the Pooh and some bees, is published in the London Evening News on Christmas Eve 1925 and broadcast by the BBC on Christmas Day. And so the stories begin. Here's the real Christopher Robin singing one of his father's poems about Pooh. So Pooh and I go whispering And Pooh looks very bright And says, well, I say six months, But I don't suppose I'm right The first book of stories, Winnie the Pooh, was published in 1926, followed by a book of poems, Now We Are Six, in 1927, and more stories in The House at Pooh Corner in 1928. Since then, over 70 million copies of the four books have been sold in over 30 languages, making it one of the most popular and influential literary works of the 20th century. Here is A.A. A. Milne reading part of the story in which Pooh and Piglet go hunting and nearly catch a woozle. One fine winter's day, when Piglet was brushing away the snow in front of his house, he happened to look up and there was Winnie the Pooh. Thirty years later in America, Walt Disney becomes a fan of Milne's stories after reading them to his daughters. Disney furthers Winnie's popularity by producing three animated featurettes, including Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. Uh, who are you? 
I'm Pooh. Oh, Pooh. <laughs> sure. Uh, what's a Pooh? You're sitting on one. This wins the 1968 Academy Award for Best Cartoon Short Subject. I'm just a little black rain cloud. The success of these lead to a fourth featurette, an Emmy Award winning television series, holiday specials, and films such as Pooh's Grand Adventure, The Search for Christopher Robin, and The Tigger Movie. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, Published over 75 years ago, Winnie the Pooh is still one of the most beloved characters ever created. And Piglet, too. And today, another generation meets the wonderful world of Pooh in a brand new television series, The Book of Pooh. <laughs> hey there, me amigos. How exciting. Yes, it's Pooh in 3D. That's a big aspiration to be 3D. I don't think there's anything better than being 3D. In my life, I try to be 3D. Executive producer Mitchell Kriegman explains the extraordinary challenge. If Tigger was going to come to life, he couldn't be like a hand puppet going like this. Yes, three! Bird's got to fly, and Tigger's got to pounce! <laughs> the uh, goal was to find a kind of technology that would allow these puppets to come to life in a way that they've never come to life before. And I'm not really brave, it's true. But when I'm with a friend like Pooh, I feel I could fly. Not too far, but does that really say what piglets are? There's an ancient form of pu puppetry. It's 300 years old. It originated in Japan. It's called bunraku, and it's a very specific style, actually, bunraku style. There's never been a way to put that on television or in film because the puppeteers don't disappear automatically. Um, so what we've done is we essentially put them in green suits and we have a computer that recognizes green as a color we take out, which is the way chroma key and matting and alternate works. And then we've created a virtual world that we do in a fairly unique way that allows the puppeteers to see themselves in the world at all times. It's really strange being in the virtual world all the time. You, it's very, uh, you have to do a lot of thinking, but they have to work together as a team, and the amazing thing is they improvise as a team. They they make jokes as a team. Hello, Winnie the Pooh. Uh, small talk, small talk, honey, honey. Carrots, carrots, you confuse me. I get flustered, etc., etc. Well, I better get going. Goodbye, Pooh. Uh, so, so see you soon. Oh. Everything I do, whether you see it apparently on the surface or not, has curriculum in it, has some kind of positive learning in it. Oh. Boy, oh boy, that is the ugliest dinosaur I've never seen. <laughs> it's dinosaur, Tigger, not dinosaur. Hey, you Thor, I snore. Uh, I have a three-year-old, a six-year-old, and a nine-year-old. They're all at different stages of relationship to reading, you know, and we try to uh, use the Pooh characters to exemplify all those different stages of like sounding out words and trying to understand a sign and knowing what a word means and what a list is or a schedule or a calendar. Free bone. Free bone. Don't mind if I do. Oh bother. It seems the trap trapped or but the sign worked. There is nothing more enjoyable than making puppets move and, and creating beautiful stories and movement out of objects like this. You know, and I think now after we've done so many episodes, we sort of feel like we live there. You know, everyone's in the 100 acre wood most of the day. Thanks to A.A. A. Milne, Ernest Shepard, and the real Christopher Robin, Winnie the Pooh and his friends are much more than characters that live on in our childhood memories. They live on in our hearts. As Milne wrote at the end of the House at Pooh Corner, wherever they go, and whatever happens to them on the way, in that enchanted place on the top of the forest, a little boy and his bear will always be playing. <laughs>